child's pose is arguably one of the best poses in the entire class. Take your first breaths here, your first moments, to just connect down onto your mat, to press your palms down, to establish your breath here for the rest of class. Start to deepen your inhales, lengthen your exhales, and come into your ujjayi breath. Take a deep breath in and fully exhale all that air out. One more time. Full breath in. Big breath out. Come to downward facing dog. Bend your right knee. Bend your left knee. Straighten out. Move your whole body. This pose is a part of integration, this first sec section of our sequence, so that you can integrate all your limbs into your core, getting connected here. Take one more breath in and out. Walk your feet up to the head of your mat. Halfway lift, long, flat spine here, ragdoll. Let your head drop down. Pull the pit of your belly up and in. Press your heels into the mat. Roll the whole way up to standing. Take extended mountain. Bring your hands down to heart center. So we'll be in class today with three alms. Take a deep breath in. Uh, Extended mountain, exhale, fold. Halfway lift, breathe in, let it go, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take two breaths, in and out. One more time, deep breath in, full breath out, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Extended mountain on your inhale, fold, exhale. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Two breaths, in, that's it, out. One more time, breathe in, breathe out, jump, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Extended mountain. Go for the back bend this time. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Set your drishti to the back of your mat here. One more breath. Full inhale. Deep exhale. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Extended mountain, eyes to the ceiling, fold. Halfway lift, choose one spot to look at, chaturanga. Keep your eyes there. Up dog, downward facing dog. Two breaths, move it now. Wake up your whole body. One more time, breathe in. Bend your knees, breathe out, jump. Halfway lift, fold. Extended mountain, last one here, fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Up dog, down dog. Two breaths. One more time, breathe in, breathe out, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, hug your belly up and in, fold. 
halfway lift, chaturanga. Up dog, downward facing dog. Right side, warrior one. Breathe in, hands go up. Breathe out, hands to the mat. Up dog, downward facing dog. Left side, warrior one. Hey off, exhale, hands down. Upward facing dog, down dog. Two breaths. Uh, take a nice deep breath in, sigh it out. One more time, inhale, sigh it out, exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, breath in, fold breath out. Half lift, chaturanga. Up dog, breathe in, let it go down dog. Right side, warrior one, drishti to the ceiling. Hands down, exhale. Up dog, down dog. Left side, warrior one, move. Hands to the mat. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Start to really move the air in your body. Full inhale, deep exhale, all that air out. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, sit lower this time, fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Up dog, down dog, right side warrior one, deep in the lunge, hands to the mat. Up dog, down dog. Left side, warrior one, low as you can go. Hands to the mat, exhale. Up dog, down dog. Two breaths. And then we'll move to our last sun B. So deep breath in, full breath out, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Chair, eyes at one point, fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog, eyes to the ceiling. Down dog. Right side, warrior one. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Left side, warrior one. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Deep breath in and sigh that breath out. Bring your right leg up into the air. Bend your top knee, open up your hip, flip dog. Now, if you wanna know the best thing about practicing in a room with other people, it's that you get to make funny faces at them when they're in the flip dog. So wave to your neighbor, make a face at your neighbor, stay for one more breath here, Come back over high plank and into side plank. So now, I have some extra special things planned for us in class. This is the first one. Lift your bottom leg, your bottom knee up to your chest on an inhale. Exhale, press your leg out, straighten it. Inhale, knee up. Exhale, leg press. Two more times, inhale, knee up. Exhale, press. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Come through. Upward facing dog into down dog. All right, guys. Left leg up into the air. I have a few surprises today. Bend your top knee. Open up your hip. Flip dog. I think you all already knew that when you got the hand towel at the front door. Now, start opening up your chest. You're lifting up towards the ceiling, lifting both shoulders up towards the ceiling. One more breath, and then we'll come back over high plank into side plank. Now we're doing the same thing. Bottom leg hugs up into your chest. Then on an exhale, extend it. Two more times, inhale up. Exhale, press out through your heel. One more time, inhale up. Exhale, press, chaturanga. 
Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. I know. Aren't they fun? Just take a breath here. Sigh it in. Let it go. Right side crescent lunge. Now, with hard work comes some extra special things. So, crescent lunge. Drop your back knee down to the floor. Interlace your fingers. Stick them on your front leg. And then lean into the stretch here. So you're looking to stretch out your hip flexor. That's the thing running along the front side of your body that probably says, hey, hello, we're here now. Tuck your back toes under. Rise up into crescent lunge, keeping this stretch. This is probably a lot lower than you're used to. Yeah? Are you getting that? Yes? OK, good, thanks. Now reach your fingertips to the ceiling. So once you're here, the opportunity is pull your fingertips back three more inches until that stretch reaches from your hip the whole way up into your hands. Yeah, Tess? That's it. I've got one big smile here. Hands to heart center, twist to the right. I know, isn't that different? <laughs> Open up your hands, three breaths. You have this. Yeah, that's it. Two more, just like that. Last one. Breathe out. Inhale, rise up, crescent. Warrior two. <sighs> Get low in your front knee, then take extended side angle. <sighs> There's something so nice about extended side angle. Reach your top hand up towards the front of your mat. Here, Lena, just like you're giving me a high five. That's it. So you start to get this stretch that reaches from your back foot the whole way up into your top fingertips. Reach up and out through there. Stay for one more breath with an inhale. Exhale, hands down to your mat. Move through, upward facing dog into downward facing dog left side crescent lunge keep the breath moving all right crescent drop your back knee down and we'll go for the hip stretch interlace your fingers hand on to your thigh and then lean into your front leg find the spot where it stretches all out into your hip yeah Who thumbs up do you have a stretch here nice things okay now come up into crescent lunge see your hands are already in the air that way now lean those hands back look for the stretch that starts in your hip and travels the whole way up into your fingertips now you've got it reach up and out spread your fingertips one more breath hands to heart center twist to the left three breaths now breathe with your neighbors it makes the pose easier two more See, and I'm actually counting this time. One more breath. On your inhale, rise up, crescent lunge, and into warrior two. Drishti over your front fingertips. Take extended side angle. Reach your front and top hand towards the front of your mat. So you're looking for a stretch that starts at the skinny edge of your back foot and reaches the whole way up into your fingertips. Do you have that? Yeah, that's it. One more breath. Inhale, hands to the mat on your exhale. Upward facing dog, into downward facing dog. Take a breath in, exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold, chair pose. Nice job. Press down through your heels into the mat. So you're activating the backs of your legs here, your hamstrings, your glute muscles, all that active. Sit two inches lower. Yeah, look at that. You had two more inches to go. You knew it. Stay one more breath. Fold. Bring your feet out to the edge of your mat. Pointer fingers wrap around your big toes. <sighs> With each exhale here, breathe all the air out. When you get all that air out of your lungs, you'll find that there's more space to fold. Focus creating deep 
full exhales. Come back, chair pulse. Let's go, round two. This is it, you have this. Sink down into your heels. Come right back to the chair that you had last time. Now, reach up through your fingertips. You're looking from a straight line from your hips the whole way up to your hands. This is gonna happen by pressing out through your fingertips, that's it. Reach up, hands to heart center, twist right. Oh, I know I surprised some of you here. Two breaths. That's it, hips low, heart high. Last one, let it go. Then inhale, rise up, chair pose, and switch sides. Two breaths, that's it. You can do anything for one more breath, this is it. Inhale, rise up, chair pose, and exhale, fold. Bring your feet out to the edges of your mat and tuck your palms underneath your toes. Oh. Gorilla. With each exhale, move something out of the way that's not going to serve you in this practice. If there's anything that you're still holding on to from off the mat the rest of your day, the rest of your life, this is the moment to give that thing up because it's not gonna work for you for the next 30 minutes. So let it go. Get focused onto your mat. Then take crow pose. You get to choose crow, handstands, upside downing, however you wanna do it. Move to your next pose for five. That's it, Hug your belly up and in. Four, three, two, one, and then chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, exhale, move, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold, chair. I know, some of you guys know where I'm going with this. It's from chair, sit down four inches lower. Sit down three inches lower. Sit down onto your mat and roll the whole way onto your spine. We're gonna take reclined eagle today. I love reclined eagle. It's so good for your belly muscles. Right, let, wrap your right leg over, right arm under. To be honest, if you wrap the opposite leg over top, I don't mind. Just cross your legs. Now what I do want you to pay attention to is your thighs. You wanna press one up and then pull the other one down. This is really gonna engage your deep core muscles. You should feel your belly button pulling down towards the mat. Flex your feet, shins up at 90 degrees, parallel to the mat below you, that's it. Now, from here, one more breath and switch sides. Left arm under, left leg over top, just like you're standing on the mat. Press your knees together, and then press your elbows together. Press one elbow down, and then lift the opposite elbow up. Hug deep into your core muscles. Pull your belly button down towards the mat. One more breath here. All right, legs and arms out overhead. Stretch long. Yes, it's the best way to recover from this pose, I swear. <sighs> Hug your knees into your chest. Rock head to toe three times. One, two, three, chair pulse. Yes, I know you gotta hit it in your chair. That's it, one, two, three, nice job, stand up. All right, rise the whole way for right side eagle. Now I like to do it on the mat and then standing because you really get to take a look at the ab muscles and how they integrate into this whole pose. So if you don't feel your abs working, our default is usually to lean forwards in this pulse. What you might need to do is draw your shoulders back to stack them right on top of your hips. That's it. 
take two more breaths. Low belly pulls back and then switch sides. Left arm under, left leg over. Nice job. Get low into your legs. This is the next part. Your thighs have to be just as active in this pose standing as they were laying down on the mat. Bend your bottom knee to get one inch lower with your hips. Now actively press your thighs together. The top one pressing down into your bottom leg. That's it. Stay one more. All right, rest up. Shake out your sides. And we'll move to right side standing leg raise. Take your palm, sit it on the top of your knee. So this becomes an ab exercise too. The real thing here is to press your palm down into your knee and then lift your knee up into your palm. When you do this, you're gonna feel your belly button pull back towards your spine. If you're not having that action happen, press down harder with your hand, lift up harder through your leg. Flex your raised foot. That's it, nice job. One more breath and switch sides. Left side, standing leg raise, same way. Palm onto the top of your knee, press down through your hand, lift up through the knee. Hug your low belly back. Front ribs hug into center. Drishti active. Last breath. And then feet down. Let's go to right side airplane. Ready, set, go. Right side airplane. So in this pose, you got to keep the same action happening with your belly button like it's attached to the ceiling by a string pulling upwards. If you really got that, hugging up and in, you'll feel it radiate out into your foot. Yeah, all your appendages are supported by the core working here. Switch to half moon. Lift that top ankle one inch higher. Low belly hugs up and in. That's it. Stay one more breath and come down. Okay, shake out your legs and then we'll move to airplane on the left side. Hip back and then reach out for airplane as you fold forwards. Flex your raised foot. The trick to this whole pose is to picture it like pressing out through the crown of your head all the way back to your heel. Reach across your mat. Get as long as you can. Take up the most space possible and then half moon. The length here. Go for the lift up and in through your core muscles. Stay last breath. Feet down. Let's go right side dancer. Right hand back to your inner ankle and left hand reaches forwards. That's it. Here, switch your hand the other way. So do your inner ankle. That's it. Nice job. I know it's a tough one. Press your shin back, reach forwards through your palm. Drishti to one point. Last breath, switch sides. Left side dancer. Press back through your knee and then reach out through your front hand. You're looking for a stretch that goes from one side of the body the whole way across into your opposite hand. Press out, feet down. Right side tree pose. Foot to your ankle, your shin, or the whole way up at your thigh. You get to choose anywhere but your knee. Reach your palms up towards the ceiling and then lift your eyes up to the ceiling. If you're somebody who feels really confident in tree, like, oh yeah, I've got this every time, you can start working into a little back bend from here. Really what you gotta do to get that is to press your heel into the mat and reach up and out through your fingertips. You can try it on, don't worry. You have this, nothing bad's gonna happen. 
feet down. <laughs> Left side tree pulse. That's what I love about equanimity and yoga in general. Like, yeah, the worst thing that happens in this pose is that you fall out of it. And that's the real opportunity. When you fall out, you find the edge, bring your hands up to the ceiling, eyes to the ceiling. The edges you grow in the pose. So if you ever get into a pose and you're like, yes, we have checked this box. I've got it. I've got nothing else to learn here. You got to start searching for the edge again to a spot where you might fall out. Bring your feet down. Come to the top of your mat. Extended mountain. Inhale. Fold. Exhale. Halfway lift. Breathe in. Chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right side triangle. Now bring your eyes up to the ceiling. Take your drishti up. You know, changing where your drishti is in a pose can change your whole experience. In triangle, when I want to really focus on grounding and pressing my heels down, paying attention to the foundation of the pose, and yeah, I like to look down at my foot. But when you want to explore reaching your hand up towards the ceiling, finding the freedom that can come from a back bend or the freedom of getting deeper into your front hip crease, bring your eyes up. On your inhale, rise the whole way up to standing. Take side facing, wide-legged forward fold. Take a bit of softness in your knees. A little bend here. For my upside downers, if you are so inclined, you can choose to get upside down here now. If you're not looking to get upside down to a handstand, headstand, whatever other options there are, I challenge you to find some stillness in the pose. I love to go for the opposite here. But when you find stillness, sometimes there's this deep release that you can find in your legs just by breathing and choosing to stay in the pose. My upside downers, feet back to the mat. And then everybody on your inhale, rise the whole way up to standing. For namaste, front facing, forward fold. And if you're somebody who loves a split variation here, you can go for it. But for front facing forward fold, feet on trail road tracks, press your hips back, you fold forwards. As you inhale here, I like to picture almost like I'm inflating my lungs and spreading out my ribs, seeing how much space I can get between each rib to get a nice long spine in this pose. Often the farther out you can get with your spine, the deeper you feel the stretch up your front leg. Take twisting triangle, left hand down, right hand out to the side. Bring your attention into your hips for those of you in front facing, namaste, front facing forward fold. And specifically in dragging your right hip backwards towards the far side of your mat. Yeah, that's it. You got this. Last breath here, inhale. And chaturanga out on your exhale. Upward facing dog. Into down dog. Side triangle. Okay, we did eyes on the ceiling last time, eyes on the mat this time. Check it out how moving your drifty changes the whole experience of the pose. So look down at your foot and experience the grounding of connecting down to your mat in that way. Consciously press your heels down. Press the ball mounds of your big toes down into the mat. 
and then hug your legs. So skin to muscle to bone, hug in here, creating all this action in your feet and in your legs. One more breath. And on your inhale, rise the whole way up. Take side facing, wide legged, forward fold. And this time, go for ninja lunges. They're a personal fave, so I can't skip them in class. If we're going to do side facing, wide legged, forward fold, we're going to do ninja lunges, mainly because they're just my favorite. I think they're fun. Move your with your breath on each exhale, switching sides. When you exhale in this movement, get all the air out so that you can turn on your core muscles and help them move you from side to side. Even out your sides, come round to center, and then on your inhale, rise the whole way up to standing. Take namaste, front facing, forward fold, or your split variations. For namaste, front facing, both feet face the front of the mat, about hip width distance. Take your fingertips, your pointer fingers, into your hip creases, and then press your hips back to fold forwards. And I mean this in a very literal sense. I pull back with my fingers when I'm folding into this. What you notice there is that your fingers are really going to hit are really going to help you actively press back through your hips that's it so take this finger and pull back a little bit harder yeah you got that that's it do you feel how that changes the stretch in your front leg yeah i know it's a big change <laughs> take twisting triangle right hand down left hand to the side in case you weren't aware namaste front facing forward fold is one of the trickiest poses for alignment. That's why we usually talk through it so much. Take one more breath, chaturanga on out. Move through, up dog with a breath in, down dog on your exhale. All right, it's time for the hand towels. We were gonna get here either way, but take your hand towel, Place it at the very end of your mat. I'll demo this way for you guys today. So, hand towel on the end of your mat. Bring your hands back to the ends of your mat. You're going to have to make sure you don't have a neighbor that you're going to kick in the face here. Double check that before you move. Nice job. Thanks for not kicking each other. I appreciate that. Now, come to downward facing dog with your feet on the towel. From here, you're going to slide your feet out to come to high plank and then slide them back in to come up into down dog again, just back and forth. I know you got it. You really got to hug your belly up and in to make that movement. Nice job. Go back and forth. Here, Amanda, you might want to turn around and get a little more space off the side of your mat. Oh, yeah, you got this. All right, two more. And then come to downward facing dog. Walk the whole way onto your mat. Take a forward fold. <sighs> Interlace your hands. Let your head drop down in your forward fold. <sighs> How did that feel? Low belly definitely turns on in that pose, yeah? It's an awesome way to prepare your core to get into handstands, to get into curl pose, and lots of other fun poses. So we're gonna do it one more time. <laughs> Set up your hand towel at the back of your mat. Here, let's turn this way instead. So come with your, I know, the wall's really close to you there. <laughs> so there you go, feet onto your towel, and then you press them back into a high plank and pull up into down dog. <laughs> I know, it's a lot of core strength going on. Hug your belly up towards the ceiling, that's it. Nice job, hug in through your shoulder blades there. And try going a little slower. Yeah, that's it, you have this. Press your pointer fingers down. Last one. Okay. <laughs> From down dog, come to a forward fold. Okay, how did that feel for everybody? Good things? I told you, 
the hand towel wasn't for sweat today. <laughs> Take your forward fold, hands cross at your elbows, and let your head drop down. Not only is that an awesome ab exercise, it's really got a lot of shoulder action that happens there too. Take a halfway lift on an inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Move from upward facing dog into down dog. Roll out into your high plank and lower the whole way down onto your mat. Locust pose. Use those belly muscles to hug up and in and then lift for locust. You've got this. Five, four, three, two, one, land. You can knock your knees from side to side if you'd like to. Then we'll set it up. Round two, locust pose. Press down to lift up. Hug the pit of your belly, your belly button straight up towards the ceiling. Hug and come down. Knock your knees side to side. And take floor bow. We'll do two sets. So if you like to do one side at a time, go for it. Press your shins back, feet flexed, lift up, floor bow, round one. That's it. Now, I love to cheat in this pose. And if you want to know how to cheat in this pose, it's called holding your breath. Breathe. I know. One more time. Inhale. Come down on your exhale. Knock your knees side to side. And then we're going to do floor bow one more time. This time, breathe. Huge inhales followed by big exhales. You'll notice that you might rock backwards and forwards a little bit. That's good. Take more breaths here. Feet flexed. Nice job. Last breath in and come down. Knock your knees side to side. Take upward facing dog. Yeah, press your feet down into the mat until you can feel your ab muscles stretch out all the way up into your chest. Bring your knees to the floor. <sighs> We're going to do a little variation on camel today, and it's one of the last ones we've got. So sit onto your ankles. Fingertips are going to face your toes. Then on your inhale, lift your hips up and let your head drop back. Hey, you got this. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah. You can get a big quad stretch here. You got this. Let your head drop. <laughs> One more breath. Okay, bring your bum down and roll the whole way up. <laughs> what? Hey, I think you got that. Okay, we look a little confused. Let's do it one more time. Just, just for, like, just because. <laughs> All right. Come down onto your ankles. Fingertips tucked so that they're facing your toes. On an inhale, lift your hips up and let your head drop back. Now, one of my students, Charlie, pointed this out to me because he loves the quad stretch here and also the chest stretch. Take one more breath. You've got it. Okay, butt down. Roll the whole way onto your back for bridge pose. And if you want to know why you have to get the quad stretch and the chest stretch, it's for bridge and wheel. So roll the whole way back. You've created some space now. Do bridge pose round one. Heels down, hips up. You've got it. Tuck your shoulders underneath yourself. Pull your fingertips down towards the bottom of the breath mat. Big breath in. Come down. Knees side to side. Round two. Press down. Lift up. Bridge. That's it. So stay a bridge here. You've got three poses coming up. You get to choose whether it's bridge or wheel that you want to take. Choose the pose that's up to something bigger than yourself. Come down. Choose the pose that presses you to your edge. Press down. Lift up. Inhale. Bridge or wheel. Round one. Take a full breath in at the top. Exhale. Chuck your chin and come back down. Knees side to side. Reset breath. Press down. Lift up. Inhale. Round two. 
Bridge or wheel, that's it. Full breath in. On your exhale, tuck your chin, come back down. All right, knees side to side. Last one, let's go. Press down, lift up, inhale, bridge or wheel. Down three for three, two, one. Tuck your chin, come down. Supta Baddha Konasana. Soles of your feet together, one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. Yeah, this is a great pose for a sigh. Ground yourself by feeling your palms, the weight of them on your chest and on your belly. Feel the heat that you've created in your body underneath of your hands. Feel your breath as it rises and falls. Take happy baby. Hands by the outer edges of your feet and rock right to left, left to right. Pull your sacrum, the lowest part of your spine, down towards your mat. From here, bring your heels up into the air. You wanna get your whole spine flat on the mat. Everywhere from your hips to your lowest ribs is going to stay glued onto the mat for all of these exercises. Bring your fingertips up towards your toes. We're gonna do little crunches up here for 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. On your exhales, breathe out and crunch up, pulling your belly button down towards the mat for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fingertips behind your ears, shins parallel to the mat. We're doing yogi bicycles. Exhale, twist. Stay for it. Ah, 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 come back here. Exhale and twist. Exhale, twist. Exhale, twist. Pull your low belly down and twist. Twist. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 feet flexed, 5, 4. Three, two, one. All right, knees to your chest. Rock head to toe three times. One, two, boat pose. Last one. All right, feet out, hands out. Hug your low belly back for five, four, three, two, one. Knees into your chest. Rock into downward facing dog. You're going to need your trusty old hand towel for this one. But it's one of like my favorite stretches in the world. So take your hand towel onto the right side of your mat. Oh, sorry, Allison, I'm realizing I'm too far away for the camera to, for you to see. Hand towel to the right side of your mat. In downward facing dog. You're going to take your left leg underneath of you and place it on your hand towel off the side of your mat. I know. From here, keeping your legs straight and both hip points facing down, lower down onto your mat. Yeah, it's a big stretch in your bottom leg. Now, if you get here and you're like, okay, this is way too much, Bend your knee to turn down the intensity a little bit. Yeah. How's it going? Now from here, if this is good for you and you're like, okay, we could turn this up a little bit, you can come down onto your forearms. But what's really gonna turn up the intensity in this pose is flexing your extended foot and pressing your heel out. Okay. Now I'm going to walk around and help because it's not an easy one to get into, okay? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so focusing on bringing both hip points over. 
Yeah, that's it, Judy. Okay, good stuff. We're looking good over here. All right, next side. Nice job. So, Mark, we're gonna use a block under your hip, okay? <laughs> All right, right here. And that's gonna give you a little more access. You probably wanna bend your bottom leg a bit. Yeah, just like that. Are you getting a stretch along the outside of this bottom leg? No? Okay, that's good. So extend your bottom leg a little bit more, straighten it out, flex your foot. How's that? This is what I like to call a Goldilocks and the three bears kind of pose. Because you might not feel anything. You're like, okay, the porridge is cold here. And then all of a sudden you move the pose a little bit and you're like, oh, it's hot. Things are spicy, stuff is happening. All right, let me help. Here from down dog, slide into this one more time. Left leg out and then lower both hips down. Yeah, so bring your bottom foot up a little bit and then press out through your heel. That's it, looking to bring this top hip over. I know it's a lot to put together. <sighs> a plus Z equals what in this pose? All right, now that we're successfully in one side, we're gonna switch to the other. <laughs> How? <laughs> That's a great question. We'll demo again, okay? So, how about I do it this way this time? From downward facing dog. Now you're gonna bring your right foot, but I'm doing it opposite, onto the hand towel and lower the whole way down onto the mat. The stretch you're looking for is on the outside of your leg. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, good things. And yeah, you can bend your bottom knee a little bit, it helps. That's it. Big stretches, I know. Okay. Thumbs up if you're good. Thumbs down if you need help. Or just actually raise your hand, that's much easier for me. Got you, all right, good stuff. Nice job. Here, let's, oh, good. All right, so this hip point, you're just gonna focus on bringing your hips just like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit over into center more. Hold on. There, and then sit down onto this one. That's it. I know. Are you good? Medium, we got so-so. Okay, good, thanks. You're gonna have to use your breath in this pose. <sighs> Last one. And then come the whole way out into down dog. If you wanna know why this pose is so spicy and you suddenly get somewhere where you're like, oh, there's a lot of things happening. You're actually stretching out and moving around your sciatic nerve, which is that thing that pinching in your low back when you sit for a long time, it happens right here. That's the spot you're stretching out. So it's right here in your low back. And you get it because it attaches from here the whole way down into your leg. Come through to a seated position. We'll go for a seated forward fold, all right? Feet flexed, inhale, fingertips up. And on your exhale, fold forwards. Take one breath here and let your head drop. Rise the whole way up. Take fish. So block underneath your thoracic spine or use your form to lift your chest up and drop your head back. Now point your toes. I know this is the only pose in the entire practice where we tell you to point your feet. So it must be something pretty special to do that. Take one breath. Roll onto your right side. Remove your block from underneath of you. Come the whole way back onto your mat and you get to choose how you wanna get upside down, hips above your heart, 
shoulder stands, head stands, forearm balances. Ooh, you could even do your little, oh, yeah, okay. All of those options, waterfall and shoulder stand as well. If you really didn't get enough of your feet in the sliding from plank to down dog, this is also a time to try that out again. Shoulder stands can move to plow. Welcome. Plow can move to deaf yogis. Deaf yogis, slowly roll the whole way down onto your mat. Hug your knees up into your chest. Let them drop to the right side of your body. Eyes over your left shoulder, supine twist. Now, throughout practice, we typically talk about ujjayi breath, the four-part breath. Now, my challenge for you is to move back into your natural rhythm of breath. One continuous breath that flows straight from inhale into exhale. As you breathe out, let your shoulders melt down onto the mat. Hug your knees into your chest and take Supta Baddha Konasana. We did both sides, right? No? Oh, the knees the opposite direction. I knew too many of you guys were going the other way. <laughs> Now for real this time, hug your knees up into your chest and then take Supta Baddha Konasana. Soles of your feet together, one hand on your heart and one hand on your stomach. There's a cold eye towel by the upper corner of your mat. Feel free to use it if you're in studio. Shavasana. As you let your body come to rest into stillness, 
start listening to the sound of your breath, to the sound it makes when you breathe in and when you breathe out as well. When your mind begins to wander, just bring it back to the sound of your breath. As you listen, start to identify the little so of your inhales and the hum of your exhales. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Interlace your fingers and stretch them up overhead. Point your toes and take like a full body yawn here. A big inhale. On your exhale, hug your knees up into your chest. Rock onto your right side. Place your forehead on the mat. Rise up into a seated position. Inhale, bring your fingertips up into the air. And on your exhale, hands down to your chest. We'll close class with three ohms. Um, um, uh, Thumb knuckles to forehead center. Together we bow our heads and we say, Namaste. Thank you all. <laughs> it was so much fun to have you in class tonight. Thank you for trying on new things. It was lots of fun to get to slide back and forth from down dog and plank and do the different stretch on your back. Well, not on the other way with your leg. Thanks for coming.